Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with a new topic. But first of all, accept my apologies, okay? I'm sorry, I've been keeping you waiting. I have kept the speed of the uploading very slow because I was out of videos and the problem was that I was busy uh, with my exams. So they're finished and finally I'm back to recording. This is the first video. Today is Friday, uh, no, not Friday, today is Monday. 10th of January so maybe you get this video later tonight or, or tomorrow but I'm back okay with the new topic what's the new topic the systems described by differential equations so once again what you know what a system is right and you know what a differential equation is which I do not know and you know that very well as well so now we would be dealing with some systems that are described by differential equations and we have many types of these differential equations which again I do not know so this, the, the, the type that we use out of the many types of the differential equation the type that is used to describe an LTI system and that we would be using those are the linear constant coefficient differential equations now this is the name of that equation which we are going to use I do not know what is it, why is it called this, maybe we can do later. Maybe we, it has some specifications for a linear, for a constant, for a coefficient, some meaning it has. But I would suggest you to, you know, ask your differential equations or calculus teachers about this. Right? Not a, from a signaling system point of view, I would, I am here to, 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 you know, tell you about it. But what are differential equations, how to solve them, these types? So that is not the part of signaling system and that is what I do not know properly. So let's begin with the topic. Yeah, so you know previously we had been uh, discussing about systems where the output was given as a, where the input output relationship if we talk about the input output uh, relation was given as what? Till now that we had studied, we have studied till now. So we had output on one side, y of t, and the input on the other side, which means the output was some function of the input. Some function of the, let's say x of t for input. So this is what we know and this is what we have seen till now. And this sort of a representation, this sort of a representation is called an explicit representation. What? You know this again, explicit representation. And now if we are talking about linear constant coefficient differential equations, for which I would be using a shortcut linear constant coefficient differential equation LCCDE right so in this sort of a case let's say the, the, the example that the book has taken so I'm writing it over here the derivative of y of t the derivative of y of t and then plus 2 times y of t and this is equal to x of t so have a look at this equation can you tell what is the relation between the input and output by looking at this equation directly? No. No, because this is not an explicit representation. We do not have directly the output as some function of the input. No, we do not have it like this. Rather, we have an implicit representation. Implicit representation. Is that okay? So what is an implicit in which you do not have a direct relation? You cannot say directly how the input is related to the output by having a look at the equation. As we saw in the equations previously, those were the explicit representations, but this is not the case. So, so what do we have? We are generally interested in the explicit representation to have a clear view of the system, to have what? To have more detailed knowledge of the system, to have it easy. So what do we do for that case? We solve the differential equation. And let me keep on writing the steps as well. We, we, we do what? We solve the 
differential equation. The first step is to solve the differential equation. So when you solve it, you would have the output on one side, the independent variable on the other side of the equation. Solve the differential equation. That is the now the solution, the solution again you know that the solution y of t, this would be equal to y p of t plus y h of t. And what do you have? That the solution to the differential equation is a sum of the particular solution. y p is what? It's the particular solution. And particular solution means what? That it is a solution for a particular input right and the other is what it's y h of t and y h of t is what it's the solution to the homogeneous equation to the homogeneous equation and what is homogeneous equation when the given differential equation is equated to zero when the input to the system is zero or what Yes, when x of t is 0. Homogeneous equation is the system in which the given systems x of t is supposed to be 0. So this is the case. This is step number 2. Now, when you solve this equation, so number third step would be that in the solution, you would have a number of unknown constants. You would have unknown constants involved. And what do unknown constant means that you, you can take any constant. Those will be unknown, right? If you take a particular value, the other person takes another value, I take another value. So what does this mean? This means that you will have infinite number of solutions. You would have infinite solution. But the system is what? The system is a single system. It would have only one property, not infinite properties. So it should have one solution, which means that it should have one unknown constant. The value of the unknown constant should only be one. One means single, right? We should only have a single value of this unknown constant. So for that, what do we need? We need some more information to be given with the, with the given equation, right? So, so let me write, infinite solutions we would have, right? But, but what? But we have a single system, but single system. So single system means it should have some single properties depending on a single value of that constant. So this implies what? Single constant. So now how to find that single constant? So here comes number step number four to find that unknown constant. We need some extra information. We need some extra information. And where does that extra information comes from? This implies this extra information comes from the initial condition or we would call it over here. In the signaling system course, we would be calling it an auxiliary condition. So this is where the, the extra information would come from. And now, if you remember about causal system, the causality property that we discussed, the LTI system's causality. So what do we had? We had the impulse response of the system to be zero for negative values of time, right? So the extra information, this could be an extra information that the system is zero, the signal is zero, or the impulse response is zero, which means the system output is zero for the negative values of time. So this is the generalized system. We have a property. So we could conclude this summation that we could further restrict our study or for our simplicity, we are restricting our study to what? We are restricting. Restricting ourselves to what? To causal LTI systems. To causal LTI systems. 
and for causal LPI system what do we have we have the condition of initial rest the condition of initial rest would be our uh, the is the is the auxiliary condition that is what our book has taken you can take any other conditions you know you would you may be given you may be given with an auxiliary condition along with the question but to summarize our study to generalize our study or to simplify it for ourselves we are using a property and we know that the system output would be zero for the negative values of time the impulse response is zero we've already seen that in the property of causality of the LTI systems so this is what we have done so now we would be seeing what we would be seeing causal LTI systems described by linear constant coefficient differential equation so what would you have you would find a particular solution you would find a homogeneous solution to find the unknown constant you would use the condition of initial rest to find that unknown constant what is the condition of initial rest if x of t is equal to 0 for t less than t naught or equal to t naught this implies what that your y of t would be equal to 0 for t less than or equal to t naught fine so this is a general introduction to this topic so i believe you know this video would get long now if i uh, uh, discuss more uh, things in it so i say uh, i saw this example in the next video okay so let this be for today let this be for this lecture see the next lecture very soon tell then take care of yourself and everyone around you goodbye